Hey, how's it going guys? Jack and Matt here with the Toaster Bros. And today we have something that you may have not seen in a while. This is a gateway laptop that we bought from Walmart. And we paid $350 and it features a Ryzen processor. Is it worth picking up? Well, we're about to talk about that. But first, a word from today's sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by Lexar, your one-stop shop for all your storage needs. Today we are looking at the Hades RGB RAM kit featuring absolutely beautiful RGB, capacities up to 32 gigabytes, and super fast 3600 megahertz speed that is rock solid stable making it perfect for your next intel or amd gaming rig but don't forget that lexar has ssds as well like the nm620 with read speeds up to 3300 megabytes per second and write speeds up to 3000 megabytes per second and capacities of 256 gigabytes 512 gigabytes and one terabyte if you're looking to build a new pc or just upgrade your rig then definitely consider the hades memory and nm620 ssd by checking the link down below a special thanks again to Lexar for sponsoring today's video. So like Matt said, we picked this up for $350. We originally picked it up for under $300, then they canceled the order on us, then they brought it back. It was more expensive, but then we were able to get $350, but now that we've just checked again, it's now almost $450. So make sure that you check this you know, description as soon as you can to make sure that it's actually in stock at the right price. I probably wouldn't pay more than like 450 bucks for this. That'd probably be the limit, but who knows? It could actually be worth 450 even. So let's go ahead and open this thing up, see what's inside and dive into some benchmarking. So this gateway laptop, I know like nothing about because it's a gateway. Um, just checking the back here real quick. 15.6 inch screen, 1080p, Windows 10, uh, 10 hour battery life. It actually tells you all the ports that it has. It does have Bluetooth 4.2 and Wi-Fi, obviously. Eight gigs of RAM with an asterisk on it. I wonder what that means. Um, yeah, and then we have a Ryzen 5 3450 U4 core, eight thread, 256 gigabyte storage, and the processor base frequency. I don't know why they only show the base. You know what, Matt? I do need the knife. Oh, there actually is I a seal. I need the knife. It was invisible. Wow, well, invisible right. seal. Here we go. Here we go. I'm excited. But yeah, it says that we got the blue version. Yeah. I guess we'll find out, but it's looking pretty blue to me. It has that THX audio to it. I like that it's a slightly mean, bigger laptop. Normally these is, ones are really small. It seems like, like small. widescreen yeah. almost, doesn't it? But let's just see what we get in the box real quick. It looks like we get some basic instructions. We have like an Asus style power brick that you see a lot in like the Vivo books and stuff like that, where it does not actually have um, like the separate port. Separate port. A separate plug that plugs in the wall, you basically just do that and boom, it's kind of like a tablet or you know, something like that. Really, really low end power, but basically, because these don't need a lot of power. It's a very basic, these Ryzen uh, APUs are very efficient, very good on power, and you don't really have to worry about carrying around those massive bricks like you do for your gaming it's very systems. Blue. Yeah, that's really blue. Definitely don't know how I feel about how blue it is, but it's pretty. I mean, this would be cool for like someone in college or something. But as you can see, we have the Windows sticker, our Ryzen 5 sticker. And it says gateway, made in China. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But it does look like we actually, I, I think that's a RAM upgrade slot. It might be. That looks we'll like, yeah, we'll have to pop that out. But to go over the ports real quick, we have a micro SD card reader, a combo headphone jack, a USB 3, and then nothing on the back. We have nothing on the front. And then on the other side, we have our DC power in, another USB 3, a HDMI out, and then a USB type C. So not a ton of USB ports, but that's really common to see on these cheaper laptops. And then opening it up, we have a pretty sleek looking design here. I mean, I'm actually, I don't know, the blue is actually kind of growing on I me. Mean, I hated it at first, now I'm starting to like it. Um, this is weird, right? Okay, those are just LEDs. At first I was like, is that the power button? <laughs> so our power button's right here. Really standard keyboard layout. Does it actually have power? We actually found the power button. We've been struggling with that recently. Yeah. Oh, I think I saw it turn on. All right. I'm gonna guess it's we're, dead. We're, we're gonna plug it in. I thought I saw the screen flick on, but Maybe I didn't. Um, then after we plug it in real quick, we will pop open that RAM slot to see what we have there. I'm curious if we have like, you know, one stick that's soldered and then maybe that's the spot where you can add just one stick or do we actually have access to both uh, dims of RAM there? Don't really know yet. We'll have to figure that one out. Let's not have a Acer Nitro situation where it's not plugged in all the way. Hey, gateway. Hey, gateway. It Dude, works. Has that just always been their thing? Like yeah. having the cow? I don't know why. Calster, I expect a minimum of five cows in this video. Um, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and wait for this thing to load. Looks like it's taking a bit to load. <laughs> um, but once we get in there, we're gonna install some games. Oh, here comes Cortana. Ooh. Hi. Wow, that's, 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 that's THX, quiet. bro. Yeah, THX that's right THX. there. But yeah, once we get all set up here, we're gonna have some games installed and do some testing. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna show you guys how to crank some 90s in Minecraft. Oh, just like that. Just like that. So to show you guys the settings real quick, we are on 
fast graphics. We're on the threaded chunk builder, which in Minecraft, I remember there's back in the day, now, there was yes. two settings, man. But so we're on like a medium render distance. 12 would be normal. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna up that max frame rate. We have bobbing off fast clouds. So I'd call this like medium settings. You know, we definitely could be a lot lower. There's a lot of things we could go lower on. But as you can see. As we're rendering in chunks, because you gotta remember, you know, we're, we're running a pretty simple APU here. It is going to lag because, you know, if we run in a new direction, we just loaded this world up, by the way. You notice how it's loading like these mountains and everything. That's thousands of chunks per millisecond it's having to load. And so you're gonna see frame drop until you've explored the map. And that's something, you know, we always like to explain in Minecraft because we don't want people thinking like, oh, you know, the PC's bad. It's really just, it's just having to load a lot. You know, there's a lot going on. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna raise the render distance just so we can actually see like what this thing can do. So uh, 12 render distance, fancy graphics. We'll put on minimum uh, smooth lighting. I've noticed that, I don't even know what it means, the mid map levels. Uh -huh. Whatever that means, I lowered that from four and it significantly improves performance. Oh God. All right, so now that we've uh, increased the graphics, it is reloading all the chunks. So let's just give it a second here so we can actually, sky test. Whoop, 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 100 oh. FPS. Oh, can we, can we, oh, there we go, dude. Th that's for the 144 hertz screen that we don't gamers have. gamers out there, yeah. And what resolution is this again? It's is 1080p. This... Oh, it's 1080p? Yep. Well, that's pretty impressive. So in theory, um, you know, we're gonna test with some other higher end games, but if you're having trouble running a game, you could also lower the res to like 720 in the game. I don't think you can really do that in Minecraft, but no. it just runs like whatever the native resolution is. But I mean, hey, we're running like high settings right now and it is completely playable. Obviously, if you want like the full, you know, 60 FPS constant, no drops, no dips, you know, no render uh, chunks, anything like that. You can go low settings and not have to worry about that, lower the render distance some, but I'm just impressed at how good this APU is for the price. So let's go ahead and test another game. All right, guys, we are now in CSGO, which for some reason is not that easy to run, apparently. I'm gonna go and lower the volume real quick because it's pretty loud, but we are running on pretty much all low settings at this moment. Um, and we are still, well, th that might actually cause a problem. <laughs> Oh god! Oh, oh wait! Oh, that actually didn't really help a whole lot. But um, 30 to 40 FPS. We are at 1080p, so 720p might actually help. Got Bob. Um, it might help you get 60 FPS here. I'd pretty much imagine you would run at 60 FPS. Um, playing a first-person shooter like CS:GO uh, at 30 FPS is not ideal, and it does look like the Vega graphics are pretty much pinged at 100%. Um, it goes back and forth. Actually, it goes like 50 to 100. So. <laughs> like 25. Yeah, so it goes all over the place, but. Yeah, below 60, not a great experience, but again, this is a very cheap laptop and it's using older Vega hardware. I eventually hit them. Um, and th these uh, older Ryzen APUs could mainly play these games at 720p. That was ideally what you were looking at if you were picking one of these up. So, I mean, as a normal day, like everyday use laptop, this is a really good option. Uh, the four cores and eight threads are perfectly fine for any task you throw at it. And then you can do some really light gaming, maybe some Bloom's Tower Defense. I mean, that's like the best, that's the best game for something like this. Yeah, so those easy games like that, you can easily throw this on this PC and uh, have a decent experience. Now I'm gonna go around with the auto real quick and just miss everything. Yeah, you gotta remember guys, you're buying this laptop mainly for work use. I mean, you're not gonna, you're not gonna be like, man, I really want a gaming laptop and then pick this up. But this is like just a huge added bonus. The fact that you can actually, oh, they pulled out the D. But the fact that you can actually like, you know, play some esports titles like Minecraft, some probably some Valorant, some CSGO, there's a few other games out there, but probably say Apex Legends, Fortnite's definitely gonna be hard to run. But uh, yeah, CSGO, it is what it is. Dude, I'm still beating the bots. You made that bot feel so bad when he was watching the kill cam. Oh, Ooh, over the headshot. But yeah, there you go, there's CSGO. 720p probably better, oops, sky test. Oh, we almost <laughs> hit 60. It was close, but not close there just yet. Fortnite. All right, gamers, we are now in Fortnite and we are running at 1080p on performance mode. And we do have the render scale down to 75%. I might drop it down a little bit more. Um, Fortnite is definitely a game, just like we saw with CSGO, that you probably wanna run at 720p to get a constant 60 FPS experience. As we drop in here, it definitely is gonna stutter as we're loading in all these textures, but I believe it will settle out probably within like the 40 to 50 range, close to 60 FPS. Um, but lowering that render scale will help you a ton and will mess with that a little bit as we land here. And it's looking like, as I thought, about 40 to 50 FPS, still some stutters here and there. And then we get all the way up to 70 and 80 in these like closed off locations where we're not looking out at all the trees and stuff that's generating. So it's definitely playable, but I think I am just gonna go ahead and drop this down to about 50%. 
It does make it a lot blurrier, but you're looking more at like a constant 70 to 80 FPS, over 60. Still a little bit of a stutter here and there, but it does perform well, playable, that's all you can really ask for for a budget laptop like this is not designed for gaming. Um, all you really need to do is lower some settings and you can play some games on the go and uh, yeah, play Fortnite. Now, if I actually find somebody to shoot, we could show you some good gameplay, but as of right now, I'm not finding anybody. But as you can see, we're running around, the FPS is a little all over the place. So I would really deem this somewhat playable if you're just a very casual gamer. You don't really care about having the utmost, like best competitive settings out there for a game like Fortnite. Uh, but if you're just looking to play Minecraft, you got Roblox, you got all that sort of stuff. Oh, wait a minute, there's somebody. And I just killed somebody. Oh, 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 we're just, it's all good now. It's great for competitive gameplay. Let's go. Oh, this guy's a bot. Clearly he hasn't even shot at me yet. Okay, there we go, we just killed two bots. But uh, yeah, look at that, I changed my mind. It's great for competitive gameplay, just kidding. But um, yeah, this is Fortnite, it's playable. I like it, it's good. Let's just wrap this video up real quick. Okay guys, we just got done benchmarking this laptop and honestly, Gateway has really done a great job with it. Hopefully we can actually find this thing in stock at a good price. Like we said, we would really not pay more than like 460 bucks for this thing so check the link in the description down below hopefully we'll have some affiliate links for it through some other websites and you can actually pick it up for around the 300 dollars price range so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video if there's any other budget laptops out there you want us to test here at the toasty bros let us know down below and once again check the links i'll try my best to keep them as up to date as possible for this laptop and some somewhat relatively similar ones that might be a better bang for the buck as always, we hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, check out our other two YouTube channels and also our twitch.tv slash Toasty Bros. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye. And hey, if you want to pick up this laptop or other laptops and other gaming PCs, you should check out our PC selling business. PCBros.tech is where we sell stuff that's featured on the channel along with some stuff that is exclusive for PC Bros. Check out our website, PCBros.tech, or come in person. See you guys later. Goodbye.